daredevil doctor, a constant thorn in the side for the Department of Civi Civil Aviation, constantly breaking the rules. For the many aircraft traveling overland from England to Australia during the 1920s, Darwin became Australia's northern gateway. Many of the uh, people stayed at the Victoria, Hall, Victoria Hotel on Smith Street. Interesting, the wings fold back on this early plane. This marker on the side of the control tower of the original Darwin Aerodrome, dedicated to the memory of all pioneer pilots who helped develop communication links between Australia and the rest of the world. There are many uh, pioneers who established records and are worth being remembered, but I'll take a look at Amy Johnson. Amy was the first woman to fly solo from England to Australia. She landed in Darwin on Empire Day, 24th of May, 1930, 19 days after having left England, the third fastest time. And a very attractive young lady she was. Amelia Earhart in Fanny Bay on landing in 1937. Another major event in Fanny Bay was the 1934 Melbourne Air Race. 1934, Sir McPherson Robertson, the confectionery magnet, sponsored a race from England to Australia as part of the Melbourne Centenary Celebration. Darwin was the first Australian port of call, and Fanny Bay, the aerodrome, became a focus of international attention. The race was won by Charles W.A. Scott. Planes arrived at the dome to refuel and continue on through Australia to Melbourne. A purpose-built to Hamlin Comet won the race, but I'm not sure what that looked like. Qantas from Outback Airline to International Carrier. Qantas stands for Queensland and Northern Territory Airline System. And Fanny Bay became the center of their operations following the construction of a large hangar. Completion of the hangar. The hangar is still there today and used as a museum of technology. It's no longer used by Qantas Empire Airways. The hangar was an important part of the Qantas route from Australia to Singapore. It was leased by Qantas in 1938. With the Second World War, a large military airstrip was commenced, and this airstrip received only limited use during the war. It was bombed by the Japanese in 1942 and badly damaged, and again badly damaged by Cyclone Tracy in 1974. The famous Qantas service 
an earlier aerial photograph of the Ross Smith aerodrome. With rapid settlement in the area, the runway was sold for its real estate value and became the Ross Smith Boulevard that exists today. During the Second World War, Fanny Bay did play an important role as the base for a Spitfire squadron. It was occupied by number 12 squadron, equipped with the Anson light bombers and Whirlaway aircraft from July 1939. The new Royal Australian Air Force runway is shown to the north or top end of this photo and the old Ross Smith Aerodome. It's at the bottom next to the beach. The old runway of the Ross Smith Aerodome, which became Ross Smith Boulevard, pictured here in its early days. Thanks, visitor, for accompanying me on this visit to Fanny Bay and in particular the Aviation Park. Appreciate your company and wish you a very pleasant day.